Hey guys, it's Brie. Um, so some of you might know that I had been reading The Bullet Catcher's Daughter by Rod Duncan. Um, and I also had a copy of Unseemly Science, which is the follow-up book uh, to The Bullet Catcher's Daughter. I got the follow-up off of NetGalley. Um, and it was really fun to read. I'll, I want to start by saying that. It was the book of the month read for last month. Um, and I had it for a while, I just hadn't picked it up yet. It was kind of like sitting on my to-read shelf and I hadn't grabbed it. Um, it's the first in the Fall of the Gaslit Empire series. And it follows this young woman, Elizabeth, who fled from what's essentially like supposed to be mainland uh, Great Britain up into Scotland uh, in this alternative kind of steampunk universe. There is a barrier. They've remained two countries um, and the two countries don't necessarily get along. Um, she flees from her home uh, after her father's death. Her father died in debt and she's told that she's going to be uh, essentially sold off to this guy who's not very nice. And um, when we pick up with Elizabeth, it's actually five years after that. Um, she has become a, uh, a private investigator. The world that she's living in is very um, Victorian in values, I would say. <laughs> it's the kind of society where women still don't show their ankles kind of deal. And Elizabeth, um, it, you know, she wouldn't be able to be a private investigator normally, but because her father was a bullet catcher, he was kind of the ringleader of a traveling show. Um, she grew up from a very young age learning how to appear to be something that you're not, how to kind of pull off illusions. And so she has convinced everybody that she is also her brother, um, or that she lives with her brother. But she doesn't have a brother. In fact, she is her brother. Um, and it's under that guise that she starts to solve crimes um, or to be a private investigator. <laughs> the first book is really a lot of fun. That's this one right here. And it follows Elizabeth as she's trying to hunt down this, um, this guy who's supposed to be nobility. Uh, she's hired by his sister who's like supposed to be really wealthy to hunt him down and he's gone missing, she thinks, with the traveling circus that is in her, on her side of the kingdom. And so she's looking into this guy and it turns out that he's in trouble with what's called the patent office. And the patent office is like the special police in charge of people's steampunk technology. Um, and they have this arbitrary and kind of all-powerful position um, they aren't afraid to kind of hurt people in hunting them down. And so she really goes after searching this guy with that in mind because the patent office is kind of a threat to her as well. Um, the patent office is by and large responsible for her, her father's kind of situation when he died. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, Rod Duncan is... I looked into him a little bit because I, I had never heard of him before. Rod Duncan was a crime writer. Uh, this is his first foray, I think, into like steampunk SFF areas of writing. Um, and you can kind of tell that because it's, it's I feel like there's a, a kind of flavor to the crime noir or like uh, procedural kind of mystery stories that SFF puts out, which is very focused on technology itself um, and kind of the institutional structures and it's really fun because in this one that kind of takes a back seat to the adventure itself. Um, it's not really a concern so much about the technology or about kind of the big bad government. It's very much a fast-paced entertainment story. <laughs> That's it's, it's more about Elizabeth's process of finding this guy than it actually is about like the SFF steampunkiness of it. And in fact, I think that if you've never read steampunk, this is a really fun place to start because the steampunk in this is not overwhelmingly present. Um, so it is a steampunk novel. There are, you know, 
airships and you know steam powered boats and all sorts of fun stuff like that but it's not an ever present steampunk kind of a, you know it, it's not overwhelmingly steampunk it's not something where you're going to feel like oh my god this is so much um <laughs> That being said, I can tell that this is kind of a first in the genre type story. The story isn't necessarily always the smoothest to read. Uh, there's a lot of backstory that's kind of choppily spread out throughout the book. Um, I didn't find it to be too bad, but it definitely was not a, necessarily a smooth explanation of who Elizabeth was or what her family life was like. Um, that was kind of done in spurts with no like real explanation for why it was being spread up the way it was. Um, I do think that this book was a lot of fun despite that. I didn't find that to be too much of a turnoff. Um, and some of the prose does have that like tortured first novel kind of feel and I think that's just got to do with this is the first time he's writing a novel in this particular genre. Um, that being said, it is a lot of fun. Um, and on top of that, it has these really interesting themes about um, feminism and honesty and identity and what does it mean to be somebody who the system is kind of, I don't want to say against, but someone for whom the system is not always very easy to use. Um, there's a lot of really, I think, subtle ways that Duncan introduces those topics that are they're clear nods to this is what it would be like to be a woman in this particular society this is why it would not be you know terribly pleasant but it's not overwhelmingly present either it's not like he's hitting you over the head with it it's just something that's a fact of Elizabeth's life and it's a fact of her story um, and she challenges those kind of societal norms that she has in a way that's really very interesting and I just think very well done. I gave it something like a four out of five stars, maybe closer to a three, seven, five, um, but definitely a fun read. I really enjoyed my time reading it and I blew through these so fast. Um, <laughs> they're not terribly long. There's something like almost 400 pages around 350, um, but they're a, they were a lot of fun and I read them probably both of them in a day. <laughs> Anyways, if you've read The Bullet Catcher's Daughter, let me know what you think of it, and I will talk to you later. Bye.